Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Monday evening, September 21st. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We continue to track Tropical Storm Beta nearing landfall along the Texas coast. Hurricane Teddy, which is beginning its transition into a non-tropical but powerful cyclone as it moves past Bermuda toward Nova Scotia. And we have the dying remnants of Wilfrid down in the central Atlantic that do not pose a threat. And there is another wave interacting with an upper level low to its northeast that might have a low chance of developing over the next couple of days, but it's not, a, not expected to be a land threat. And we also have the remnants of Hurricane Paulette that may have a chance of redeveloping into a subtropical or tropical cyclone as they pass south of the Azores here with some convection near the center, but also not expected to be a significant threat. We're going to start here with Beta, and this is the close-up view along the Texas coast showing the rotation just offshore of Port O'Connor. And again, not a very strong storm as dry air has been wrapping around and continuing to limit thunderstorm activity near the center of circulation. Winds have come down a bit to about 45 miles per hour as of the recent NHC advisory, but getting plenty of rain despite the lack of thunderstorm activity on the north side, as we can see on radar imagery from Mark Nissenbaum's FSU page, which show plenty of rain bands extending to the north of Beta Center, just southeast of Matagorda Bay, up to the Houston-Galveston area and uh, southwest of there. There are also some broad rain bands off of this current screen up into Louisiana and to the upper part of Texas as Beta has been slinging some bands of rain far and wide away from its center over the last couple of days and that is likely to continue for at least the next couple of days as Beta continues to be a slow mover here as it moves on shore and then toward the northeast. This is the NHC official forecast showing that movement inland and then a turn toward the right and a slight acceleration over the next couple of days ending up over Louisiana by Wednesday as a weak system. And uh, note here that we're not really expecting any kind of wind intensification if this comes back out over water briefly you can see it's near the coast on this forecast track but even if it comes back out over the gulf we are expecting very strong westerly winds aloft to be present following landfall and this will keep uh, any intensification from occurring even if the storm uh, passes back over the water. So primarily a water issue here with storm surge continuing to be a concern across a wide region here with one to four feet of water level rise above normally dry ground, possible in areas from the mouth of the Rio Grande to even parts of the Mississippi coastline as winds out of the south and southeast continue to push ocean water toward the coastline and cause water rises. And then we also have inland flooding threats continuing from the area near landfall up toward the Houston Galveston area and then on up into a wide swath of Louisiana and Mississippi as well as the center will end up over Mississippi by midweek and we will have a wide region of periodic rainfall that could be heavy enough to cause flash flooding in places where these bands pass over the same region over and over again. Keep in mind that uh, while Beta is not dumping rain everywhere, if you get a band like this, for example, training over the same location for hours and hours at a time, that's hard to predict, but when it does happen, can dump a lot of rain and can cause flooding issues. And if Beta is a slow mover, you have an even greater chance of that happening in certain places. So keep an eye out for those training bands and any flash flood warnings issued by your NWS office. We're going to turn now from Beta to Hurricane Teddy, which is now passing up to the east of the island of Bermuda and is beginning its transition now to a non-tropical cyclone as it begins to interact with a very strong upper level trough to its northwest. And you can see this indicated by a large mass of cloud indicating the baroclinic zone or the boundary between a bunch of warm air near the hurricane and very cold air to the northwest of the hurricane that is basically a frontal zone that Teddy is now interacting with. And this is beginning to transition the storm from a tropical hurricane into a non-tropical storm, more typical of a winter type of cyclone that has a cold front on the south side and a warm front on the north side, and we're likely to see a more comma-shaped cloud as this approaches Nova Scotia. But winds remain up at 90 miles per hour and will likely remain high for at least the next couple of days leading up to landfall in Nova Scotia as the non-tropical processes will lead to even a little intensification of the cyclone over the next 24 hours. 
in terms of central pressure and possibly wind. As this gets north of the Gulf Stream, which runs through about here, the water does get quite cold and the system will also be occluding. So for both tropical and non-tropical reasons, Teddy will likely start weakening as it approaches landfall in eastern Nova Scotia and continue weakening thereafter, but not quickly enough to avoid significant impacts to parts of Canada, where we do have tropical storm warnings and watches up for most of Nova Scotia and then parts of Newfoundland as well. Landfall on eastern Nova Scotia expected sometime on Wednesday morning and wind gusts up to hurricane force over about 75 miles per hour may remain possible here. Certainly winds over tropical storm force greater than 40 miles an hour are very possible. Here's the probability map of winds greater than 40 miles per hour occurring. And you can see that those are high probabilities throughout the track from Nova Scotia into Newfoundland and over a wide region given the size of Teddy's circulation. The probabilities do go down over time as Teddy will be weakening during this point, but even hurricane force winds do have a small chance of occurring over parts of Nova Scotia, especially near the point of landfall where Teddy will be most intense and then weakening thereafter during its track toward the Northeast. As we move from Teddy now and look through the rest of the basin, the only other system that could be a land threat that I'm going to note here is this little piece of the cold front that extends down from Teddy and across South Florida and the Gulf of Mexico. This front is pushing southward with a strong northeast cool dry flow behind it. And this is going to push southward into the Caribbean over the next couple of days and then perhaps surge back northward by later in the week. This is the depiction of that on the GFS forecast showing precipitable water, which indicates moisture in the atmosphere, showing that front as a tongue of moisture and then dry air and brown getting pushed in behind that. And as this front pushes down into the Caribbean, it's possible that we could get some sort of little low to develop along the front. And uh, if we go forward on the forecast here, you'll see that front come down toward the south of Cuba on Wednesday. And then by Thursday or Friday, we'll see it surge back northward as moisture flow is renewed out of the south uh, from the Caribbean. And you always have to watch these old fronts in case something tries to spin up along the front and try to develop over the warm water. During this time, there is going to be a fairly light upper level flow with a broad upper level ridge with low wind shear over the Florida Straits, which would be fairly favorable conditions if there's a disturbance there that can try to organize. Right now, the models don't expect any kind of significant cyclone to form here, but it's always something that you have to watch when an old front uh, decays over tropical waters. So we'll keep a wary eye on this, but right now chances are low at the moment. That's it for the systems we have to discuss that are currently active and threatening land. As we go forward in time here, once Beta clears out of the southern U.S. and Teddy uh, clears out of the Atlantic Canada region, we may have a little bit of a lull in the storm activity after having a period of very hyperactivity in the Atlantic with storm after storm getting named. It's possible we'll go a little while, maybe a week, without anything significant. Fingers crossed. Uh, once we get into October, climatology normally dictates that during La Nina, years, we start to see the Caribbean become more active as the Central American monsoon season picks up during the autumn. So that may be the region to watch later on toward the end of the month and into October. That's probably where our eyes will have to turn unless something else pops up, which is still possible even out to the east of the Caribbean as we head into October. So the season is far from over, even if we have a little bit of a quiet period coming. So remain prepared and stay vigilant. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.